All right, we already did lesson 6.1, the terms and the ideas. All right, now we're gonna get into some examples. So make sure you take good notes still, copy these examples down into your, uh, your notebook, onto your paper. Remember, you can use these when you take that video quiz. So I want you to go ahead and copy this one down first. So I've got triangle ABC and I have triangle FDE. All right, they are similar. Remember, that's what this means right here. This symbol means they're similar. All right, and I've got some side lengths, 8 and 10 and Z and 12 and X and 14. And I got some degrees of 60 and 50 and so on. We're going to find all these missing things, the W and the X and the Y and the Z. We're going to do that here in just a second. All right, so here we go. We're going to solve for W. We're going to solve for x, we're going to solve for y, we're going to solve for z, and we're also going to write the scale factor. So there's a lot we're going to be doing in this one. So make sure you've got it copied down, and let's start working on it. All right, if you think you know what you're doing, and you want to try it on your own, that's fine. If you just want to kind of pay attention and follow along, that's fine as well. I don't care either way, as long as you get this into your notes. Let's go ahead and let's start with the angles. Let's do w and y. Okay, so think back to what we learned in the first video. We learned that for similar shapes, the angles, the corresponding angles have to be what? I'm gonna remember, corresponding angles had to be congruent. So this is the easiest question right here, why? So E, it's the last letter, has to match, remember order is important, so it has to match with C, so I know C is 50 degrees, so therefore, y equals 50 degrees, okay? That was a really easy one. I didn't really need to show any work on that one. The next one, I'm gonna have to show a little bit of work. Let's solve for w. So w matches up with f, and I know that f matches up with a. So, wait, I got a slight problem. I don't know what a is. So how do we find angle a if I know two angles in a triangle? Well, we know all three angles add to equal 180, right? So let's do a little math here, 50 plus 60 is 110 degrees, and then 180 minus 110 is 70 degrees. So we know that this angle right here is 70 degrees, so angle A is 70. Angle A, order is important, matches up with angle F, so angle F is also 70 degrees. So therefore I know W is 70 degrees. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Now let's talk sides. Remember, angles, corresponding angles are congruent, and corresponding sides are proportional. Proportional. Proportional means I'm going to set up a fraction, and I'm going to solve it. So let's go ahead and let's work on this x. So I know that this 8 here matches a side over here. Now, if you aren't sure which one, sometimes you can go by looks, and it's pretty easy to figure it out. But if you aren't sure, look at the letters again. So a, b. So the first two letters has to match up with FD. That's the 12. So the 8 goes with the 12. So I'm going to start writing that down here. So 8 goes with 12. Okay. So you wrote that down just as a fraction. Now you can reduce that if you want to before you move on, but you don't have to. All right. Okay. Now X. X goes with EF. It's first and last letter. So that's AC, first and last. So X and 10 go together. Now I cannot put X over 10 here. Or I'll get it wrong though because the eight and the 10 are in the same triangle. So I need to keep them in the same spot. So since eight was on top, I need to put 10 on top. And then I can put the X on the bottom and I put my equals in between, okay? So eight, 12, they go together, 10, X. Now, there are other ways you can write a proportion and still be okay. There's actually eight, um, let me make sure I get this right. Yeah, eight different correct ways you can write a proportion. However, there are 16 wrong ways you can try to write a proportion. Like if you did eight over 12 and X over 10, that would be wrong, okay? But you could do eight over 10 and 12 over X, and that's fine. It's gonna give the same answer in the long run, okay? But you gotta set your proportion up correctly and solve it, okay? So let's go down here and let's talk about how we solve this and the work I wanna see. I wanna see you cross multiply. Okay, cross multiply means I'm gonna multiply these together, the eight and the x. Some people circle this and that's fine. Okay, that gives me eight x. And then some people circle this and that's fine. That gives me 120. Put an equals in between. Now I've seen people do this different ways. I've seen people do eight x and go over 120. 
Okay, they, they did the cross multiplying with the 8 and the x. That's great. They did the cross multiplying with 10 and 12, and they did this. This is wrong. This will be counted wrong. All right, you have to have an equal sign in your problem. This doesn't have an equal sign. This is wrong. Okay, do not do something like that, but I see that way too often. I'm going to mark it wrong if you do that. All right, so 8x equals 120 divided by 8. Use your calculator if you absolutely need to, but we get 15. We're gonna, remember, we're getting in the habit of doing labels, so 15 units. Later on, it's going to be feet and inches and meters and yards and things like that. All right, let's go up here and let's solve for z now. So same idea. Z goes with 14. Okay, so I'm going to start writing that out. I'm just going to do it over here. So z over 14. Okay, I could do 10 over 15, but if I had somehow made some careless mistake with the 15 and got it wrong, then automatically that'd make this wrong. So I, I want to be careful with that. So I'm going to stick with the 8 and the 12. Since I put z on top, I need to put 8 on top. So 8 and 12. Okay, let's cross and multiply. So this gives me 12z. This gives me 112. Remember, put the equals in between them. Now we're going to go ahead and divide. Now this does not divide evenly. I don't want a decimal. Just reduce it. So these are both divisible by 4. So z equals 28 over 3. Just ignore the bells. All right, don't worry about them. All right, label. Units, I'm done. Okay, so I have, let's see, have I done everything? I solve for W, yep. Solve for X, yep. Y, yes, Z, yes. Write the scale factor, I haven't done that yet. Okay, scale factor, remember, is new over old or first over second. Now, since they didn't tell me which one was new and which one was old, I'm gonna go first over second. So this is first, okay? So I'm gonna use the eight, and this is second, so I'm gonna use the 12. So my scale factor, is just 8 over 12. But we want to reduce that if we can. So that reduces to 2 thirds. That is my scale factor. Okay. Remember I said that if this is less than 1, then my shape is smaller. And if it's bigger than 1, my shape is bigger. And since this is first, that's telling me this shape is smaller than this shape. First over second, is this is smaller than this one. That makes sense. All right, so there's our first example. Okay, you're going to be doing lots of algebra with this. Okay, all right, let's do this one. Go ahead and copy this picture down real quick. So we've got a triangle WXY with a 12 and a 10, and we've got triangle PRQ. I think I need to zoom out a tiny bit. So let's see if I can do that. And wrong way once again. All right, here we go. So we're going to solve for X, and we're going to write the scale factor. See? All right, now. You might say, well, but x isn't a side of the triangle. That's okay. Here's the nice thing about this. Any special segment, like altitudes and medians and angle bisectors and all that stuff, still works the same way. It's still proportional. Okay, so I want you to go ahead and try this one. Okay? Copy it down. Try it on your own. All right, so you should have tried to solve for x by setting up a proportion. So let's think about how we'd set that up. 12 goes with 9. Wx goes with PR. Matches up Wx, PR, 12 goes with 9. So I'm going to start with that. Equals 10 goes with x. Now, I have to keep the 12 and the 10 in the same place in my fraction. So I'm going to put 10 up top. I'm going to put the x down below. We're going to cross multiply. So 12x equals 90. I'm going to divide by 12. We're not going to go to decimals, so I'm going to reduce this. Um, it's divisible by 3. That would give me 30 over 4. I can keep reducing by 2. That gives me 15 over 2. That's as far as I can go. So x equals 15 over 2 units. And I'm done. Okay, now what about the write the scale factor part? Now, once again, they didn't tell me which one was new and which one was old, so I'm going to go first over second. So wxy, 12 over the 9. So 12 over 9, can I reduce that? Yes, I can divide by 3, so that's 4 over 3, and that's my scale factor. Okay, remember, if this is bigger than 1, which it is, then that tells me this is bigger than this one. Okay, the first over the second, bigger, smaller. Bigger number on top, smaller number on bottom. Makes sense. All right, next example. We're going to do the perimeter thing. 
Okay, so copy this one down as well. These polygons are similar. Okay, so copy that down. I got a four and a seven. The perimeter here, I don't know. The perimeter here is 45. Okay, so go ahead and copy that down real quick. If you want to try to solve it, that's fine. If you don't quite know how to do this one, just uh, get it copied down, come back, pay attention. All right, so theorem 6.1. Remember, the only theorem we had in that first video told us that the perimeters have the same proportion as the sides. So all we're going to do is set up a proportion, okay? Not going to make this any difficult. It's going to be basically the exact same work as what we've been doing already. So 4 over 7 equals, I don't know this perimeter. It has a question mark. You could put X in there. I'm just going to put capital P for perimeter over 45. Okay, so this is what it's going to look like. The 4 over the 7 and the P or the X or the question mark over the 45. That's it. Now I solve. Cross multiply 7P equals, use your calculator if necessary to get 180. Divide both sides by 7. This does not divide evenly. I can't reduce it at all. So my answer is just the perimeter equals 180 over 7 units. Or it could be feet, or inches, or meters, or miles. But that's it. That's my answer. Now, check to see if it makes sense. Okay, this is smaller. Okay, is 180 over 7 smaller than 45? Well, we could type it into a calculator quick to check that, or we could do a little quick math. 7 goes into 180 25 times with 5 left over. So it's about 25, 26, which is definitely smaller than 45. It does make sense. Okay, last one. Remember how I talked to you about that thing called a statement of proportionality? I want to make sure I give you an example of that. So triangle XYZ is similar to triangle GHJ. We're going to first list the congruent angles, and then we're going to write a statement of proportionality. All right? So copy this down real quick. We're going to do these two, and we're going to be done with lesson 6.1. All right, so listing the congruent angles. All right? It's a triangle, so it has to have three angles. Okay, so I'm just going to list three sets of congruent angles. So angle X is congruent to something. Angle Y is congruent to something, and angle Z is congruent to something. Remember, order is important. So angle X, the first letter, has to match up with angle G. What do you think angle Y has to match up with? Hopefully you said angle H. And then angle Z, the last letter, has to match up with angle J. That's it. It's really simple. Okay, the statement of proportionality may be a tiny bit tougher. Okay, Remember I told you it works as a fraction. So we need to start with a side. So give me one side of this triangle. Okay, X, Y is pretty easy. It's the first side right there. Over. Now I have to match it up with something in the other triangle. So what does X, Y match up with over here? Well, it matches up with GH. And then we put in equals. And now we're going to do another fraction. Okay, so we need another side in this triangle. We could go with YZ. It's pretty simple. Okay, now what does YZ match up with? Well, Y and Z are the second and third letters, so I need to go with the second and third letters, so that would be HJ. Now, also remember, I told you that I need as many fractions as I have sides. So these are triangles, so they have to have three sides, so I have to have three fractions. Well, I don't have three fractions yet, so I'm going to get the third fraction there. And we just keep putting equals. Okay, I already did side XY. I did YZ, which side haven't we done yet? Okay, we haven't done side XZ. And what does XZ match with? Well, look at the letters, first and third. So what does it match with? It matches with... GJ. Now, this is your statement of proportionality. Now, you could do a couple things. Well, what if I wanted to put, you know, XZ before YZ? That's fine. As long as XZ is over GJ. Okay, you got to keep these sides matched up correctly. Well, what if I wanted to put the G and the H and the J and I want to put all that on the top and all the XYZ stuff on the bottom? That's fine. Not a big deal. Okay? As long as you're consistent, you can't put X, Y on the top here and then put Y, Z on the bottom here. That will be a mistake. Okay? So keep one triangle always on the top, one triangle always on the bottom, 
and then just make sure you're matching the sides up correctly as you go. And that's how you write a statement of proportionality. And that's it for lesson 6.1. All right, make sure you got good notes. Come ready to take that video quiz in class.